Well, let's look at some of the different ways of creating uh, an audio signal. And supposing I want to make a sinusoid for my audio signal. Now, what I'm pointing out here is we actually have the, the notion of sine showing up in many different places. This would be our typical math operation where it accepts a value in radians and produces a, uh, or the sine of that. Here's another one that produces the uh, waveform data type. We see it as a variety of controls like frequency and amplitude and so on. Here's another one called sign pattern. This is something that generates a one-dimensional array uh, filled with a sign, typically like one cycle. And then we have one called sine wave, which um, as this little icon is trying to suggest, is more oriented towards generating numerous cycles of a sinusoid. And lastly, we have a sinusoid showing up in the point-by-point palette right there. Now of these five that I've placed, the one that will be most commonly used is this one. This allows us to generate a, an array of samples and it does this in a very efficient manner and it's also producing its results as a one-dimensional array, which will make it easier for subsequent signal processing later on. One thing to note about this is the notion of frequency as normalized frequency. And we can always calculate that by taking the desired frequency in Hertz and dividing by the um, sampling frequency also in Hertz. I'm creating some control so that we can experiment with this device a bit. We have samples, amplitude, and frequency would be our critical inputs. And then I'll make an indicator for the output. I'm going to change this to a graph. All right, so using the default settings that are provided by this sub VI, we get one cycle of the sinusoid. Let's try varying its amplitude. Yep, we can see it's now 0.7. I'll try adjusting my waveform so that its limits are between minus one to plus one. Frequency, again, looks kind of like a funny number, but again, you have to remember this is normalized frequency that we're looking at. So frequency is a value between 0 and 1. So the way I like to work with this is to set up uh, a wire or a control, if you will, that has our desired frequency and then another that has our sampling frequency in Hertz. I will then take the ratio of those two to derive our normalized frequency. Let me try using 100 hertz for my sampling frequency and 10 hertz for my signal frequency. All right, we get 10 cycles of a sinusoid showing up. Now the time axis is not actually accurate. That's indicating actually the sample number that we're looking at, or you might call that the sample index. If I convert my one dimensional array of samples into the waveform data type, which is pretty easy to do, we then need one more 
terminal exposed here called DT, which is our sampling interval in seconds. So I already have sampling frequency. And if I take the reciprocal of those of that value, I have my sampling interval. Now again, I'll change that to the waveform graph and we can compare these side by side and see what happens. Good, so now we see time showing up in a way that makes more sense down here. That would be, uh, of course, a two hertz, sinus, two hertz sinusoid that we're looking at. Let's pay attention to now this thing called the phase input. This would be phase in degrees. Notice the starting point of our sinusoid. If I change it to 90, now I actually have a cosine because it's starting at one instead of at zero. Minus 90 shifts it in the other direction. So that way we can adjust the starting point of our sinusoid. I'll try putting that back to zero. Now let me pick a, a number that's not necessarily a whole number ratio associated with our sampling frequency. Notice how it ends just below 0.7 up here. Okay, so every time it starts, it's always starting at zero. So that brings us now to another input terminal that's useful called reset phase. And this is defaulting to true. So the behavior is that it always resets the phase to whatever you're specifying on the input or it defaults to zero. If I turn that off, now what happens when we restart? Okay, if you look carefully, you can see that the value that we ended at is now where we started. And that means that internally, the phase is being preserved across um, runs, essentially. So every time I run it, it basically picks up where it left off last time. And this is vital when we're trying to produce an audio waveform that does not have any discontinuities, because those will um, sound like clicks in the resulting audio signal. All right, check out the help for more details.